Hi everyone, today I want to tell you a story about the French King John the Good, who was, spoilers ahead, not so good. Stay tuned. John the Second the Good was the son of Philip VI of Valois and Joan the Lame, who had rather bad reputation. She was popularly named La Melle Rohan Boutiz, male queen, because of her unattractive appearance and possibly the influence she exerted on the weak king. Joan Forassard Pierre Cochon and the author of the Chronicles of the First Four of Valois described Joan of Burgundy as a vindictive person with a bad temper and unfairly blamed her for the defeat of Philip VI at Calais. She was also accused of attempted murder of several Norman nobles who rivaled the Burgundian party at the French court. Anyway, in his youth, John had the title of Duke of Normandy. He was married to Bonne of Luxembourg, daughter of a famous knight king John of Luxembourg, the Blind. He did not particularly love his wife, although he had 11 children from her. John had a real passion for the Charles de la Cerda of Spain, the offspring of Castilian family. And after becoming the king, he immediately appointed his favorite as a constable of France. However, Charles did not have any special advantages, well, except for slender legs and a beautiful face, so the English beat him on the land and sea. John treated father with hostility. When the wife of Dauphin John died of a plague in 1349, King Philip found him a new bride, Blanche of Navarre. However, as soon as she arrived at the court, the king himself fell over the hills in love with her and married her himself, leaving John in rather stupid position. Not surprisingly, from then on, John fiercely hated his father. To wash away the shame from himself, John hastened to marry. A month later, his wedding took place with the Joan, Duchess of Auvergne and Boulogne, the widow of Duke of Boulogne. Of course, there was no love here and John completely devoted himself to Charles de la Cerda, which could not but enrage his young wife. A year after the wedding, on August 22, 1350, Philip VI died. According to Brantham, a 67-year-old king was knocked down by the fierce ardor of his 16-year-old wife and the king died from amorous excesses that shortened the days of his life. And on September 26, John was solemnly crowned in Reims. Until now, it remains a mystery why he was nicknamed the Good. He, in any case, did not give any reason for this. Rather, to the opposite. Immediately after the coronation, the Good Man ordered the execution without trial or investigation of Constable Raoul de Jean, who was just returned from English captivity. Many racked their brains trying to understand the reasons of such cruelty. According to rumors, the constable, who enjoyed great success with the women and had many mistresses both in France and in England, at one time had the imprudence to drop a love letter to Queen Bourne, and the king, sorting out the papers of suddenly deceased queen, found it and belatedly became jealous. The new king did not possess either a state of mind or a talent for military leadership, but was stubborn like a mule, slow and rather slow in thinking. Often John would spend whole day on trivial matters to the detriment of important ones. So he could spend hours working out the details of a procedure for conducting some minor ceremonies. He loved to introduce all sorts of trivial innovations and loved to imitate ours. In particular, when Edward III established the Order of Gata, John caught fire on a new idea and found his own Order of Star, naively believing that the Knights of the Order would become a reliable support for the throne and give it reign splendor and greatness. The Order of Star numbered no less than 500 knights. Each of them took a vow never to retreat in battle or surrender. John designed the outfit of the Knights of the Order personally and of great love. The knights wore a white silk cloak, a surcoat, half white, half scarlet, and a scarlet cap with a gold buckle in the shape of a star. And on the finger there was a golden ring with emerald. The Order had a white banner and broiled the stars, the residence of which was noble house of Saint Tuan all the walls of which were covered with a brocade of gold and silver, as well as velvet embroilment with the gold stars and lilies. According to the charter, the Knights of the Stars, like the Knights of the Round Table, were to gather every year for a great feast and talk about the amazing feats they accomplished that year. However, the Knights of the Order of Stars did not get enough of the sky and the glory of the Knights of the Round Table didn't descend upon them. John saw traitors everywhere. He was simply possessed by the mania of traitors. He saw treasons and conspiracies everywhere. 
although I must admit sometimes his suspicions were not ungrounded. When John the Good got by his own initiative as a son-in-law Charles of Navarre, who had the opposite nickname, the Bad, he really warmed the snake on his chest. And if John did not justify his name, then Charles fully justified his. It begins with the fact that Charles of Navarre and Charles de la Cerda were not able to share their old troth, fiercely hated each other. A Spaniard dies in any way possible to denigrate the Navarian in the eyes of a king, in which he succeeded, every day the king treated his son-in-law more and more coldly. The frustrated Navarian decided to take revenge over his enemy. His vassals watched over the royal pet when he went to Legel on some business of his and stopped for the night in the inn. At night the murderers entered his room and stabbed him with daggers. Upon learning of this, the king shed many tears, and Charles the Bad only shrugged his shoulders as if he had nothing to do with it. John harbored anger in his heart and vowed to take the revenge. He waited in the wings when he learned about the secret negotiation of an Avarian with the English. Charles the Bad, dreaming of the French throne, was already sharing France with them. Charles the Bad was arrested in Rouen during the dinner given as his honor by Dauphin Charles, the son of John. The assassins of Charles de la Cerda were arrested along with the Navarian, who were alone known for the king. John ordered them to be executed immediately, and the three murderers Jean de Arcour, Mabia Menmar, and Colin Dublel lost their heads. As for Charles the Bad himself, it was impossible to execute without a trial, he was still a king, obeyed a small kingdom. He was imprisoned in the castle of Chateau Guillard, the very one in which his depraved grandmother Margarita was once strangled. While John was engaged in a struggle against the traitors, the English launched a new campaign. The Earl of Lancaster landed at Cotentin and moved in the direction of Le Coche, and the Black Prince advanced from Aquitaine to join him, plundering and devastating the land along the way. In December 1355, the State General agreed to demand for a new tax on the war, and John was able to raise a large army. Meanwhile, Lancaster had captured Le Coche and Bretel. John opened the hunt for him, but he managed to escape. But the Black Prince himself came to the hands of a king, who else joyfully met the French king at Poitiers. I must say that the king himself fought like a real knight, covering little Philip with himself. He quite successfully smashed enemy helmets with a club, and when it broke, he took a battle axe from the ground and continued the battle. However, his resistance was useless. Moreover, he received a wound in the face, and the blood flooded in his left eye. He was taken prisoner. The Black Prince, apparently intoxicated by his victory, hosted the captured king, comparing him to Roland, and then inviting him and other captive knights to the dinner, where he served the king at the table himself. John was quickly consoled by the defeat at Poitiers, and was taken to Bordeaux and from there to England. In captivity, John II was treated with all due honors. He was given a luxurious apartment in the Chateau Savoy, where he was treated not as a prisoner, but as a dear guest. To keep the king from getting bored, a large retinue of servants and his personal jester arrived from France. The captive king often visited Windsor Palace, took part in the various festivals, and the English ladies did not ignore him. One of them, whose name in the history has not preserved, even became his mistress, so the king's life in England was not bad so much that he forgot about his homeland of France. In France, no one fought to blame the king for the defeat, on the contrary, everyone pitied him and called him nothing but a John the Brave. This was not cheap for the French. Edward III demanded a fabulous sum for the ransom of the king, three millions gold a coup, or 500,000 pounds, which was eight times the annual income of the English crown. The king was in captivity for four years. As a ransom, he even had to sell his 11-year-old daughter Isabella for 500,000 florins, marrying her to the cruel tyrant of Visconti. This Visconti was famous for organizing a hunt for his own subject, after which half dead people hunted by the dogs were buried in a furnace. After receiving the money for Isabella, John was released, but his son Philip was kept as a hostage until the king paid the entire ransom in full. Returning to France, the king began to squeeze money out of the war-ravaged country, but then the news came that his son, held captive in Calais, had escaped from captivity. John was overjoyed at this news, but not because his son found for freedom, but because it gave the king, who was born in France, a reason to return to his adored Englishwoman. This, they say, is a matter of honor, and therefore he must hostage until the complete payment of a ransom. He never returned to France, according to Frassard, having spent the whole winter in continuous amusement and entertainment, 
King John the Good died suddenly on April the 8th, 1364. That's it for the story of King Knight John the Second the Good. Hope you like it. Like if you do, subscribe if you don't want to miss more. Bye bye.